Hi, I'm Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager here at Hopkins Center for the Arts. We're speaking with William Z. Lindmark about his exhibition, Portraits of Paris. William, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, this series of work, uh, our patrons have really been enjoying as uh, what I think most people take as a love letter to the City of Light. Mm -hmm. is, is that a fair uh, assessment or, or description of yes, the show? Yes, that's, yeah, that's uh, correct. I'll, I'll, and many people love Paris for a lot of reasons. Uh, your love of Paris, when did it start? It started off at a young age. Um, yeah. I've always, when I first heard about Paris, um, probably when I was 14 living in San Francisco then, starting to do the art and stuff. Yeah. So that's when I started more getting in uh, process with, inspired by Paris itself. Before you'd visited even? Was yeah. it reading about it? Correct, and, uh, yes, yeah. What, what aspects of it uh, most activated your imagination at that time, before visiting? There was a movie that was, uh, I was introduced to. It's called The Moderns. Um, it was way before Midnight in Paris. So it's that sort of a theme of uh, that movie genre that sure. I first saw. And then from then on, it captivated me and introduced me to different artists um, and writers, too, yeah. at the same time. So. And you'll see a lot of it, like Gertrude Stein. And, yeah. Uh, throughout the work. Uh, a mecca for great thinkers great artists, both mm -hmm. written word and visual art. Um, was that your, was that a point of particular captivation? Um, the, the, how it gathered all that creative thought in a, in a very fertile time? Yeah, somewhat, yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, with, with the artist that was involved during that period, sure. it was, it worked kind of like one after the other. Yeah. So when you start reading about Gertrude Stein, you're learning about other writers that were expats living in Paris then. Sure. So like Juna Barnes, and you'll see other ones too. Yeah. Um, when, when you made your first trip to Paris, did it live up to your expectations? And more. And more. Well, and yeah. more, yeah. yeah, because you're now come face to face with all this. But it's all kind of sort of like, because these are people that have long, you know, yep. passed. And now you have like your imagination to start working with and with all these, you know, bygone artists that have passed us and stuff. How, how and I'll characterize it as, as playful, because the work seems Mm -hmm. Playful, yeah. Uh, but if if you don't like that characterization, feel free to tell me. We'll just cut it out. No, <laughs> it's fine. Um, well, because it's colorful, maybe that's why yeah. you say it's playful. Yeah. Because yeah. I the, um, three word that describes my work is colorful, mm -hmm. transported. Where I hope the viewers get transported back. Yeah. In time during this period, yeah. and also educational, where people start to um, question who are these people, who are the thinkers during that modern period. Sure. Yeah. Back to the playfulness of it, um, do you want of the viewer that they take these as kind of historical documents, maybe creative uh, nonfiction, but more on the nonfiction versus the creative, or are they um, ratcheted up a bit or put into different situations where there maybe are individuals that wouldn't have maybe crossed paths temporally or, or otherwise. I mean, it, how much is imaginative and how much is historical? Um, I'd say they're equal. Yeah. They're, they, they sort of like work with each other. Sure. Um, the, when I'm fascinated about someone's book, like let's say Gertrude Stein's book, yeah. then an artist pops up and it's sort of like um, they create this dialogue together, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be art or whether it be in writings. And yeah, and then yeah. that's how the inspiration come about. Do you feel equally inspired by the writers of that time as you do the visual artists? Exactly, yes. Really? Yeah. Equal? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I see... Uh, I see elements of Picasso and mm -hmm. Brock and mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, Modigliani. Mm -hmm. uh, what other artists, writers or visual artists, do you uh, derive inspiration from? Um, it starts off with 
Gertrude Stein, then she gets introduced to uh, their artist, um, Jean Cocteau. Mm -hmm. um, then it goes on to Colette, Juna Barnes, and then all these expat writers that used mm -hmm. to, to live there during that time. And then it just sort of like um, faster, festers on, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. When you're reading, as far as gaining inspiration from the written word, mm -hmm. um, is it through the images? Do you, do you see images as you're reading their work? Yes. And that comes out in your painting? Correct. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes, um, it's interesting because when I'm reading stuff, it's mm -hmm. almost like I become part of it. And then the imagination comes in and like I feel like I'm in here and then having a conversation with them. Sure. So there was at one point where I didn't leave the house and people would think like, well, because you're already going out in your mind, you know, yeah. doing all these artworks and you feel like you've been going out all the time. <laughs> yeah. Was it exhausting? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's entertaining. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so that's fantastic. how it comes about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, through... Um, some of the books that I've read, and also then, you know, of course, the visual part comes of it, mm -hmm. and then inspiration comes out of it. Um, I started off um, early on, probably when I was 17, and um, this was in San Francisco. Um, the, uh, that's where I started doing art shows mm -hmm. and galleries. Um, so it started off early on, yeah. Sure. And uh, has your work always uh, been of this stylistic approach and no, medium? No, there's really? different sort of series that I work with. Yeah. There's a narrative series where it's completely different, it's more surreal. Mm -hmm. And um, there's collage, I work a lot with collage also too, the identity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I probably have six, seven, seven different series that I'm working on. And do you work on them uh, in overlapping time frames, or is it more regimented? No, it's yeah. like right now, I, when you come to my place, there's probably about four things going on, and whatever captures me at that moment. Um, I go for how I feel. Sure. It's not so much how rigid and, no, I, you have to do this one first kind of thing. Yeah. I just let my mind wander and you know, work for itself. When you're shifting between these different modalities, um, does it take you a while to get back up to speed? In the, if you've just been painting and mm -hmm. then you move over to the collage work, is it immediately in on it or does it take a little bit to get back into the flow of that medium change? No, it just made it like I've never left. Really? Yeah. Um, that I've always known to break rules <laughs> where, no, you're not supposed to do that. You just work on one series and concentrate on that. Sure. But for me, it's more just whatever, because um, I can, yeah, it's interesting because I can just flip on and work, start painting, and then come back to the collage when I feel, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that way. And what drives the switch is mostly an intuitive response is just you just feel it's time to move on or do you make a change uh, at a certain trigger like maybe you get to a, a point of not knowing what move to make next mm -hmm. is that when you make the change or does anything drive that um no just it's just a click yeah, just yeah. You, you, yeah, you're fine, you know <laughs> what I'm sure. talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nothing like, you know, um, where I have to do this. However, um, with this show, this probably, because I did another show prior to this, I had 137 pieces then. Yeah. And this is probably a little bit harder putting it together because yeah. um, I had to, you know, rework on some stuff sure. and revisit some of this works. In the revisiting, was it to pull them together and unify them stylistically mm -hmm. and Correct. conceptually? Yes, okay. yeah. Because I wanted to create this, um, this dialogue, this one um, certain idea, mm -hmm. and how to interpret that in different mediums of art. Sure. You'll see um, watercolor, photographs, oil paints, and all that stuff. Um, and I like to see how they sort of 
create, like I said, create that dialogue together mm -hmm. in different mediums, not necessarily the same, you know, same aspect of mediums. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you ever been surprised by an interaction of one or two works? Uh, uh, well, obviously, an interaction, two works or more, um, that made them, as the kids say, hit differently. Did, have, you, have you encountered that, where you see your own work fresh through um, that dialogue that occurs with a piece next to it or on that same wall? Yeah, this started, um, that's a great question. Um, it started People up, always sound surprised. Well, <laughs> because it's that click, when you said that yeah. click, um, it started off at that beginning time, the, yeah. you know, beginning part. And when I first got into the gallery, I was doing portraits. Sure. Uh, not necessarily Paris yet, but I was mm -hmm. doing uh, portraits of my grandmother. And something that clicked, like I feel like I'm being watched by other artists. You know, yeah. not necessarily the modern yet, because back then I was more inspired by um, by pre raphaelites and the Renaissance period. So that's why probably all the vibrant colors comes to play. Sure. But so it was that point where it's like, oh, I think I can do this. Yeah. And then because I started off as a soft taught artist sure. before I went to university. Yeah. Uh, beginning as a self taught artist and then going to the university was did you encounter uh, a friction there with things that you had developed personally and and were dear to you either process wise or in your themes that then yeah. you were challenged with when you were in a structured educational environment yeah because now we're getting into the academic ones where you're learning anatomy what's right and what doesn't work sort of thing mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of a struggle because then now you have this keen eyes of, you know, trying to make it right. But I sort of just kind of let that go eventually and just mm -hmm. do, you know, yeah. Was that a difficult process of letting go of the quote unquote, what is right? And I mean, what is right for you yeah. now? Now, for me, it's just, you know, I mean, because of all these years, you become acquainted with different artists working in different, like Chagall, for instance. Yeah. It, you know, they're just movement. He, he was all about movements and um, flowing. Mm -hmm. And then there was no restrictions about his figures. So, yeah, so you get all, you know, inspired by these other artists. And it's just kind of like you let that go and yeah. you just do your own thing. And whether, you know, if there's an anatomical correct or not, it's yeah. just, yeah. Uh, how would you characterize what you go for as far as correctness or rightness now? Uh, is it to capture a feeling or? Um, it depends if what medium I'm working with. Okay. You know, so like if I'm doing figures, then I yeah. try to do, you know, the, not, the anatomy correctly. Sure. And, but then if I'm doing, let's say, the narratives where it becomes more over, you know, free flow, yeah. then that's, yeah. Um, so there was one piece here um, that I brought in, especially because of that is, um, it's a collaboration between my four and five year old nephew then, yeah. his name's Tyler. And that's when um, Phantom of the Opera first came out. Yeah. So his figures are all stick figures. Yeah. And then so it's like, whoa, you know, yeah. It's, uh, that's the kind of Picasso or Brosk, uh, uh, Brock-esque still life on the end. Yes, with, the guitar. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, so. the, your uh, nephew's imagery collaged in the center childlike aspects. Yeah. yeah. How did that come about? Well, I, you know, they would come over and, you know, they get inspired and start drawing mm -hmm. and stuff, but I never want to throw them away, you yeah. know, like yeah. a lot of people do. Sure. So I kept a lot of their drawings and stuff, and it's like, what can I do this with, you know? And then I start thinking, it's like, oh, he's playing with music, mm -hmm. you know? So again, mm -hmm. it's the dialogue, you know, what, you know. How old is work. he now? He's in 24. Yeah. And comfortable with you using his work and oh, your yeah. work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he gets a, a, yeah. a, a thrill out of it. He's I still imagine. in that sort of art, but not, not in drawings and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
Uh, nuts and bolts wise, um, your process, do you approach uh, any of your artworks, whether it's a painting or uh, we've got a diorama, um, the collage works, do you have, have you conceived what you're aiming for from the get-go? Like you know that this is the image that you're wanting or do you do preparatory drawings or studies and paintings that are smaller? How, how, do you, how do you come to your artwork? Um, no, not, no preparatory drawings. I just see it. You see it? Yeah, I just see it and I go directly to it. Wow. Um, I, then I start um, layering mm -hmm. to the underpainting. A lot of my work's now underpainting. That's probably what I learned from the academic part is yeah. you know the underpainting part, and then I just build layers and layers, and I do sketches onto the canvas itself. Sure. So that's where you'll find all the sketches is underneath the paintings. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. How how much reworking do you do as you as the painting the comes alive? During the progress. Yeah. It's all about the journey. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, until I get to that point. Yeah. Sure. And like, yeah, and. A lot of my work is, seems finished, but it can still go on, you know? <laughs> yeah. So There's never a period, I guess. You know, like I yeah. said, I revisited some of these works when, yeah. for this show, yeah. And yeah. were all the moves that you made uh, for the best in your mind? Have you ever went, revisited a work and maybe made it worse? Um, not worse. <laughs> I mean, I have, <laughs> yeah. so that's why I ask. You're no. not making me feel better, William. No, yeah. um, it's different. Yeah. It yeah. becomes different, totally sure. different, you know, yeah. Because yeah. you're kind of sort of like, you're leading into a place where you are become more satisfied with the artwork, mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, you're just leaving it the way it is, you know. So I, and it's all, like I said, it's all about the pride, I, yeah. I mean, there are some that I see of my work that's like, oh, that's hideous, you know? But it's, it's the yeah. way it is. It's yeah. the way it is. It's, yeah. the, the, it's the best. Because that's what you were working on then, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 It's there a are some the that time. I just leave alone. Sure. Like, you know, oh, you know, yeah, there's. Are there works that you know are done full stop and you would never revisit? Uh, or is there always a little bit of nagging, like there's something else that should be here? Which is your next work. Mm -hmm. you don't... Yeah, no, there's, um, there are some works that I won't touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially the, the, um, the earlier ones, you know, yeah. It's Mostly, just... Because they're uh, a record of that time, or mm -hmm. because they were so great? No, just um, probably, that's a good question. Yeah, probably just because that w those were self-taught. It's just yeah. like, you know, I just want to leave it that way and they not, have that. not look at it with that keen eyes, of, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, it's a good way to revisit back then and see the progress of what you're working on. Do you ever look back at the early work particularly during your self-taught time and think there's a thing that I used to do and I don't do that anymore. And, and I don't know that I could, you know, it, I mean, do you, do you encounter that? No, the, um, right now I'm actually, um, my new projects that I'm working on. That's part of your next question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for my, teaming me up. <laughs> yeah. My new projects that I'm working on, it's actually, um, it starts off from what I was painting back then. Sure. But I'm using all the knowledge and all the skills that I've acquired since yeah. and working it now. And you'll see that in one of the shadow boxes. Sure. It's the um, searching for Lorca, where mm -hmm. they're dancing with the music. Those were the themes that I used to, uh, when I first painted, those were the themes that I worked with was music. All right. Yeah, and dancing. So revisiting themes from earlier more than anything, not so much the aesthetic approach, is that, or a little bit of both? Both, Okay. where it, yeah. 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 
So what is next for you? You've, you've told us a little. Uh, is there a show plan for this series that you're working on? Or where can we keep up with your work? Um, there is none. I haven't really concentrated that yeah. far yet because this was kind of like what I was concentrating on. Oh. But there are, um, I'm working on more on narratives now. You know, mm -hmm. it, but it depends. Sure. Again, yeah. It depends where my mind takes me. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, where can people keep up with uh, your art and what you do? Probably on my website. Okay. Wlinmark.com. Wlinmark.com. Yeah. Let's open it up to questions. How much time passed between your uh, interest in Paris and your first visit? And when you went to Paris, did you visit, you know, the the places that you've covered in your paintings or was that from your imagination from your visit pre-visit um when i first visited i was at um when i was first starting you know um then i got introduced to paris and then i made a trip there and then I had like a guide, walking guide tour book about places where all these artists and writers live and hang out. And so that was almost like the start of it. Um, probably I would say I was 19 or something. Yeah, 19 years old when I did all that. Yeah, the Paris thing. And um, as far as the portraits, is that what? Yeah, um, a lot of it is imaginative, but when, of course, when I'm doing a portrait, then I'm looking at you know the person in a photograph and trying, and then once I capture their uh, portrait, everything else around their environment is much more imaginative. And who do I want to create? What character? What do I want to place? And stuff. Yeah. When you visit, um, how much? Do you take photographs for reference, or are you mostly soaking up culture and experience so that it comes out in your paintings uh, less literal than taking photo reference? Do um, you mean Paris itself? Yeah, or just yeah. when you're yeah. visiting Paris. Oh, I yeah. take a lot of pictures. Yeah, yeah. That end up serving as reference for your, your work. Um, some. Yeah. Like with portraits, then I'm looking at a reference to a picture that I took, and then some of it is imaginative, yeah. Sure. Or I look at it, and then I get inspired by it, and it just takes off, yeah. yeah. Do you paint on site? They, Jim actually took half of my question for me. <laughs> Do you paint on site, too, then, or is it not so much while you're there? No. Um, I take it home, then... Sometimes now, um, when I have free time, I, I bring watercolor or do my collage, where it's easier for me to put in my bag and just you know take it with me wherever I go. Okay. But as far as the oil paints, I come back and work in the studio. Yeah. In that picture right behind you, this salon. Uh huh. Uh, the salon of Gertrude if, Stein. If we knew a lot about art, would we be able to recognize each? person that's in the painting, or are some of them? Yeah. Um, well, of course, there's Gertrude and there's Alice. They, they, this is their salon. This is their place at 27 Rue de Fleury's. But the artworks that they collected, because she was one of the pioneer for modern art, one of the first collectors for Picasso's and Matisse. And that's a portrait right here by Picasso. Cezanne was another one, Renoir. Uh, Picasso, Brat, um, Matisse, Matisse, Cezanne, yeah. So these are all the original, well, the works that she collected first. But I'm meaning the, the, the people the that, people. yeah. People? Mm -hmm. um, besides the two, these are characters that I'm creating um, into my work and I'm trying to, that's actually one of the new things that I'm working on is um, building up characters and painting their certain and putting them in the paintings. Mm. So it's like, oh, this one, this painting, I've seen him before in that other painting. So they're characters that I'm 
working on, like other, you know. You've that's invented. Okay. Yeah, I invented yeah. them. I'm creating these characters into the, the art, yeah. Do they have names and backstories? Working on that, Are yes. you really? Yeah. You write yeah. it down yeah. or you just? I'm, no, I'm doing a whole watercolor. It's a trifold mm. that's very long. And so I'm creating all these characters. And so when I, whenever I do a painting, I'll see which one will, you know, it's almost like a puppet. Mm. I love doing puppet shows before. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that one guy with a mustache, he, he appears in another painting, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, or, um, or like you'll see this uh, lady with the red hair and a bob. Yeah. Yeah, she's right there too. So, yeah. So. Oh, okay, so they aren't yeah. artists that I, And I create, we're like, her name's Lucy, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Have you? She's more the flirtatious one. Is that? That's yeah. Great. <laughs> you create the whole persona. Yeah. 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 It's a whole character. Each one. And there's one that's more stern. And there's yeah. <laughs> Have you ever inserted yourself into one of these environments? There is one. Yeah. Is there? <laughs> yeah. There's a self-portrait in one of the big paintings. Yeah. That's for you yeah. to find out. Now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the, the shadow boxes. Um, what gave you the idea to do them? Mm. And they're very layered. Um, how, did you, how did you develop that? How, did you, how, how deep are the layers? How many are there? And how did you come up with that idea? So, like, um, when the question, the characters, um, I wanted to create almost like when I'm painting, it's like, how do they become alive, you know, besides just in a flat surface? And so that's when I started thinking about um, trying to create these layers. So it's more like three dimensional, like puppetry, and how do they come out of the painting? And so, yeah, um, those are my latest work, actually. Those my latest projects are the shadow boxes. Um, yeah, that's very challenging working on that because then um, I have to find the shadow box first and then try to create the depth on how many layers I can put into that box because it's just, you know, um, it's not that big. So I work first with the foreground instead of the background mm. and then work my way down. But in doing that, um, it's kind of, it's more like technical, the technicality comes into play because you want to try to do the overlap and you don't really want to show the pegs, the woods that's holding them up. Um, would you be willing to point out one place that you redid in a painting? Um, this one right here, the Modigliani one. Um, Modigliani is known for not painting his models uh, with eyes. And so I kind of tried to work this whole figure into that, but also did some of these watercolors to attachment of um, like faces and stuff, as opposed to just blank stares. William, um what, what do you feel like the place of an artist is? Um, for me, I feel like my artwork, um, I just want the viewers to connect with it mm. and be educated and want to know what is, who are these people, who are the characters, who are the writers, and that sort of thing, yeah. It becomes a springboard for additional research for, for the viewer. Exactly, sometimes. yeah, yeah, because yeah. I had, um, one of the um, viewers came up to me and never heard of any of these people, and sure. now she's all about, you know, wanting to know more um, about who are these uh, writers that sure. were living there, and uh, yeah. Well, uh, relatedly, interspersed in, in this body of work are, are pieces from your identity series, which um, seems more personal. So we've got this melding of yeah. historical nonfiction and then your very personal story. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how that came about, how, what the Identity Series is and how they mesh? 
Yeah, um, during um, my academics classes, um, I was so involved with African arts and Oceanic and Amer the Americas, um, their arts back then. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've always been fascinated with um, how to um, bring this African artifacts and making it modern. And at the same time, it's how do we make it more the now mm -hmm. with identity and being accepted sure. of who you are, what you are. So again, that's more that's become the educational part of it yeah. instead of just aesthetic. And I had this whole series where um, I developed, it's called The Runway. Mm -hmm. And again, it's characters of this um, collage works and intermingled with African arts, artifacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's interesting because I just had a conversation with someone, another artist, um, and and the question was, is it right for an artist who is not of that culture to be working with their, with their artifacts? And so that's the whole topic of what's been going on. But as an artist, um, I feel it's the right um, to introduce this historical artifacts mm. for people to learn. Mm. Not so much um, like creating, like you're changing, not so much changing or creating that culture, but it's, just, it's the artifacts that you get inspired by, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. It's how you're not speaking for that culture, it's how you're, see it's how you're observing Correct. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, you know, I don't belong in that culture, yeah. but yeah, but I'm learning about it. It's kind of like almost saying like, well, why did Picasso made all this, you know, getting it from all the African arts and all this, um, you know, um, even photographers, for instance, mm -hmm. during back then, going to these different nations and, you know, choosing that. It's one of the most challenging aspects of being an artist today, I think. Yeah, uh, is because you don't know respecting correct the cultures from which our influence sometimes come, mm -hmm. and and they are oftentimes not our cultures. Yeah, it's like yeah. almost like treading on that um, fine line, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're still finding your way and navigating that line or, or have you come up with a rule of thumb as far as your approach to referencing uh, the aesthetics of another culture? Are you, are you still figuring it out? Or? No, um, well, I've, I've worked with a whole series of that already, yeah. but um, I, I'm learning myself. Yeah. Like I'm being educated myself doing this and you know, yeah, and I, I take it all in. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. But as an artist, you, you know, you just do, you don't have to show it. You can do it for yourself. You know? Sure. Yeah. William, thank you so much for sharing your work with our community. Oh, I'd like to thank Hopkins Center for the Arts for this great exhibition that you guys put up, and also the volunteers. Thank you again. We've been speaking with William Z. Lindmark about his exhibition, Portraits of Paris.